Hey guys, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on a poser character import into view and uh, this is kind of a, uh, what I have to do. Um, there's a couple ways you can do this but I'm going to show you the easy way. So first, just have view open and just use the default scene and come here and do import object and I'm going to import my Walter Heim character from poser and do open and it takes depending on how big the object is it'll take just a minute or so and uncheck this box here um, render materials using poser shader tree you can use that but it will for this uh, little tutorial I'm going to show you um, you know the, the manual way <clears throat> this way here would actually use the um, the materials and shading from Poser, and that is uh, resource limiting, so uncheck that. And then, of course, don't do the, you can leave that, but just, I always do import single and just start at zero and leave all this else default. So basically, everything unchecked, import single frame. Because if you have a, a Poser file and it maybe have has maybe 30, you know, the default 30 frames or whatever, you're going to import all that, and you don't want that. So, And just click OK. And wait. And wait. <laughs> all right, and he should be popped in here. Uh, what's happening? There he is. Now, I'm going to center this just a little. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to turn him a little. And this button here, if you click, if you right click this guy here, it will zoom into your object. So it's kind of a handy tool. Alright, now here he is kind of centered. And I'm going to use this tool here. If you have this guy selected and you use this little rotate tool, it kind of helps you get the uh, the object to the right angle. And since I'm going to do a little depth of field training too, I'm going to change this to, let's do uh, photo vertical. And you'll see it kind of stretches. And we're going to use this to actually zoom in. This button here is the zoom. And this is the actual, it pulls the camera uh, forward and back. Whereas this actually zooms in. So you're leaving the camera in place, but you're zooming. And that's good if you're going to use depth of field. So I'm just going to leave it there for now. And we'll play with that here in just a minute, because I want to show you the um, textures first. All right, let's get him situated. All right. And let's just do a render, and we'll do a full screen. Well, let's do that. Now let's do full screen. And I'm going to drop that down just a little. And you'll see when this renders that the textures don't look so good. They're, uh, the highlights are not um, not what we want. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but you can see it's kind of shiny. <sighs> kind of dull finish. We're going to fix that. All right. X that off. And as soon as you get control back, you can expand this object guy here. And you can see here, these are the um, the different materials. Now, in this case, in Poser, I only had his, <clears throat> as far as his skin texture, only had um, his chest and his head, I believe. Yes. Uh, let's see. And I guess his eyes are in there, too. You can always just scroll through here, and you can tell where you're... Yeah, that's it. Um... 
Now these here, what I do, like his mouth is not open, so I just select these particular objects and delete them. We don't need them, it just takes up space. Alright, so these I've selected and you can select that by just clicking one, hit the shift and go down and click the last one and it will highlight them all. And then if you press, or you can come up here and do object um, group or you can do the shortcut which is control G and you get this little warning that says uh, we'll destroy these links, proceed, just do OK. And you can see here it makes a nice little group and if you click in there delicately without double clicking you can just rename it to skin. Alright, and then everything else in here is this suit. So I'm going to take the start of hip there and go down and do control G and what this will do it will kind of put these objects in groups so you may not want the right uh, the same highlighting or same effects on the skin as you do for the suit like the suit you may want to make shiny so that's what we're gonna do so come in here just click one more time and we'll call that suit now what I do to start since we're gonna take all this and I'll show you if you click the whole object and you can see here is 21 different uh, things, I should say, different uh, textures. Right click there inside this texture group and do edit all materials. And what this will do, it will let you edit the highlight on everything here. And you can see the default when it comes in from Poser. View just translates this to a 50%. And sometimes it's different. So take this and I drop it to zero for everything. And you'll see a difference as soon as we click OK. And see here how it... Um, let's do this as a compare. And render him again. And you can see it's kind of a dull finish, but <clears throat> it looks better already. And you can see the difference. See, this was the original, and this was when we took off those highlights. <clears throat> and you don't notice so much on his skin, because this particular one, his skin is not so but a lot of times their skin will come in and it looks kind of bronzy or, uh, you know, the default is, is not so good. So, all right. So we're just going to stack him in here so that way we can do another stare and compare. All right. And that's it. And what you can do from there, if you want to add more, like, um, for instance, this is a little tricky here, but sometimes you have to expand you can see like the head here it's grouped into one object but within this you've got several things you've got uh, you know his mouth skin eyelash all these parts of the eye his lips and nostrils and all that <clears throat> what you can do is either double click this or you can do right click and do edit object and then you'll get this little polygon mesh options box and do split and what that'll do is it'll take that object and it splits it apart so it separates all these objects and this will allow you now what I do is I ungroup these since they're already part in here if you do another you can actually hit this little box here it's called ungroup or you can do object ungroup which is control U <clears throat> Now again, this mouth we don't need because his mouth's not open. And what we want to do is select his eyes and let's see, I guess the eye socket too. And then <clears throat> 
Let's see, is that all? Yes. Now then we can, and within this we can do another control G, which will group just those eyes. And let's rename that to eyes. Because this, <coughs> we're going to make shiny. So we're going to do edit all materials. And <coughs> let's change the highlight color too. Let's make that white. Because if you leave it on the dark color, it doesn't really get a good highlight. And we're going to take this up to 100% for both bright and shiny. And you can see, if you just click in here, see it kind of gives you that little shine. And if you want, you can add a reflection, like maybe uh, maybe 1%, not too much. Because that looks, uh, it, it, if you put any more than 1% or 2%, it starts looking kind of weird. Unless you're super close to it, but uh, it'll pick up <clears throat> light and artifacts in there that you probably don't want. So, And then do OK. And so there is that. And then the suit, we can uh, do the same thing just for giggles here. Let's do edit all materials. And maybe we want to make that... Let's add a reflection. We'll make it maybe 2%. And we'll turn the highlight up, the shininess, to maybe 60. And maybe just the bright. And this is something you just have to play with. You can either leave it dull or change it, because sometimes that looks, mm, looks a little odd. We'll make it shiny. That way it looks more metallic. And you can try to get an idea because you kind of see where the little light is. I'm going to drop that down just a little. And do OK. And then let's render him again. And you can see the, the textures. When this completes, I'll run this through. Alright. And you can see here's the original. Let me expand this. There's the one we did just a minute ago, and here's our new one. So you can see the textures changed. Skin, you can't tell his eyes because I don't have the lighting right in here. <clears throat> and that's it. And now I will show you just quickly how to do depth of field. Alright, so say you have an object, and this is just like uh, if you're taking a picture with a camera, um, say you zoom in on something, and it's how your eyes work too. The more you zoom in, the more blurry it'll be in the background. So we're going to leave it like this because in the beginning I kind of squeezed that uh, focal in, the focal camera. And you can see that here if you zoom out in this part. You can see the camera here. And you can see that will narrow that beam right here and here you can see that expanding and contracting as we move in and out so that's just giving you the your your zoom and wide and of course this one brings the camera forward and back so you kinda for depth of field you want to have the camera kinda far away and you want to zoom it in really tight so in this case we're gonna zoom him in just about to here. And then we'll just place an object in the background. Just make a, a ball or something back here. Just for... Uh, and we'll just make that some texture that's... Uh, let's see... let's just use a... let's use a metal texture. Actually, let's not. <laughs> let's just use a rocky one here. There. <clears throat> Alright, now if we just render this normal, of course there's not going to be any depth of field, and uh, I'll do a little compare on that too. This might take just a little bit longer to render. 
and I guess I could have used a little different texture. That one's rendering kind of slow. And you'll see a, a different, a definite uh, difference here once we're done because we're gonna zoom it in and mimic that um, the way a camera would, or your eye. Um, all right, you can see from that is it's there's no depth. It's just the character, and there's a big ball behind him. All right. Oops, let's do this uh, so we can save it. I like to stack these renders. It's a kind of a nice thing in uh, View 10. Um, but if you don't have View 10, or or you can still you can still do a little stare and compare. It's just a little different, a little more harder. All right, now to do the depth of field you want to click on the camera and then you need to this here is called switch to target and it looks like a little target and you need to do focus on and when you click that it'll give you a list of all your objects in your scene and this will just tell the camera and if you look over here you can see this little guy here that little square is your focal of your camera so we're going to tell it to do Walter Heim. And you can see it jumped. That little square, it jumped to center of him. And sometimes you might get a weird thing happen where that little square is maybe back here or somewhere else. And if that's the case, then you have to do a little more trickery. But sometimes when you have the camera up, view kind of kind of gets a little stupid and it. It doesn't quite know, or it's way too close for it. So if that's the case... We can make another object and use it as its focal and just turn it off from the render. But in this case, it, it actually put it right where I wanted it. All right. And we come back up here once you have that focused on Walter Heim. And we go back to there. And this is now, it, it may be focused, but it's still not going to do anything. So this is where you have to select. And we're going to blur it. And this will give you your amount of blur. So let's to start, we'll do 1%. And you can see when I did that, we'll just use this box here. And if you double click those panels, it kind of, of course, gives you the full screen of that. <clears throat> when you click 1%, you get these little <clears throat> boxes here. And you can see that uh, here, it's there and there. And what that is, that gives you your <clears throat> your clear field. So anything within this here is going to be somewhat clear, and anything outside of it, it's going to compute that as uh, it needs to blur it. So that should give us a nice effect with the ball being back here. And sometimes you can kind of see that from your little test box here. And let's just do a test render, and we'll see what it looks like. And what it'll do is it's rendering when you're just using a final output, <clears throat> which I don't recommend going any higher than that because it takes, uh, you can do broadcast, but if you do su <coughs> superior or anything above, uh, like ultra, it uses a different depth of field technique and uh, it takes forever. <laughs> so I, I would only use, I mean, it's a beautiful output, but if you're time limited or if you're not patient, uh, just use the final, and I think the results are actually pretty good. So. And what it'll do is it'll render, and then once it's done with the actual render, it'll compute that depth of field, and you'll see it. You should see it instantly once it's done. Um, it'll 
you should see that kind of pop out and everything that's in that outside of that blur or clear field or blur it'll it should blur it nicely so let's see and if it doesn't give you the fact then we have to do some more things and we'll just pull the camera in and and adjust it uh if it's not the quite the blur intensity you want you can also bump it up sometimes if you put too much blur though it gets kind of a a raggedy look behind it and so you have to play with that so it's almost done and bam there it went so you can see Gave you the nice depth of field here. Let's put that in there. And see, that's the before and after. And that is all there is to it. And of course, you can play with that too. Like, if you want to, like a true depth of field where you would blur like that, you would probably have the camera zoomed in on him. Let's click him, and I'm going to move this. If you right-click in here and a little hand pops up, you can kind of adjust your... Let's zoom in. And the more we zoom in, the more it's going to blur. Because a lot of times when you see that in real photography, they've zoomed in really tight on someone's face or their torso... And then everything behind it is blurry. And so that way we don't have to change anything. But if you wanted to leave it the way we had it, you can always take this up and, and just, you know, bump this up to two, three, four. But like I said, the more you do, the more it, it blurs. But this way it gives you the a, a true effect. Um as you can see, if I kept bumping this up, see how that squeezes that little uh, area around the character? It gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And then that means everything within, outside of that box there, actually would be blurred. And it's not so realistic sometimes. So We're going to leave it just like that. And let's move this, actually... <clears throat> I'm going to move this backward a little so we get just an idea that there's something behind him and get a little of the sky and render <clears throat> and that's the thing too is more the more you zoom in and depending on how complex your character is it could take a little longer to render but if you have a NASA computer, then you don't have to worry about that. I do not. <laughs> and you can see they get more details of this character's face. And again, this is just a default atmosphere too, so <clears throat> you get a little more realism too with uh, adding lighting or using a, a better atmosphere. And this should actually be a lot blurrier than uh, than what we had previous, since we zoomed that camera in more. Voila. And you can see back there, and see, that's kind of the effect I was kind of telling you about. I mean, it looks, the character looks sharp with the background, though. You get kind of this, especially if you if you have a really dark object. And this would happen, too, if we had just rendered him against, like, this white background. There gets this kind of a, a strange effect back there. And, I mean, you can post-work that out, and you can kind of soften those edges, but, you know, that would change with the atmosphere, too. We could, uh, you know, soften the, uh, make a darker sky. 
but you can see the effect of that looks pretty good. It kind of pops that character right out, and, uh, and the textures look okay. I mean, I would probably go in and tweak these just a little bit more if I was going to actually use this scene. Um, I don't usually like my suits that shiny. Uh, I kind of like these a little dull. And, uh, and that is it. The only other thing we could possibly do, but it'll probably take forever to render, is change the atmosphere. And you can see these, I just used it uses a, a default atmosphere, which is kind of like this one in the physical. It's kind of a just a basic atmosphere, and it renders fairly quick. I like these physicals, but what's really nice are either the spectral sunshines or the spectral sunsets make a really good um, realistic. It's just you sacrifice a lot of render time for these. And I have some that I've made myself, that I took those and I modified certain ones. And, of course, you can just save them. And, uh, let's see, let's use... This one is like a global radiosity plus spectral. I got this from some tutorial and I just saved it because sometimes it's a nice effect. And do okay, and it's super bright. And, of course, your sun. In this instance, it doesn't really matter because it's so, so bright. And let's move him just a little. And we'll change the sun just a little bit so it gets a little shadow on the ball there. And on him. And the only thing when you render these guys is it'll give you that pre-pass. And this one, when it does the pre-pass, you can kind of see the blur you're going to get. And then once it's done with the pre-pass, it'll, of course, do the the regular pass. And then it'll apply the, the depth. And and another thing too, when you use depth of field, you'll get a spoof of your view time, which those anybody who's rendered in view knows that this a lot of times is <laughs> not very accurate because it doesn't know what that's going to compute at the end. So typically, these only take about a minute or two, but it'll tell you, oh, it's going to take ten minutes or whatever. So don't be fooled. It could take uh, actually sometimes it'll say longer than that. But you can see this atmosphere here is actually kind of nice. It gives you this bright effect, but it kind of makes things in the shadow look uh, look good, I think. Um, it's just the more stuff you have in the background will kind of wash out because it's so bright and intense. And you can see what I was saying. It's kind of, you can see right now there's no depth. Almost there. And there it is. Let's make this big. And you can see it kind of did the same. We'd probably, you know, a normal scene, I'd probably have more stuff back there to kind of. Of course, I wouldn't have that ball probably, <laughs> but you can see the difference in where we started and how it progressed. And there you have it. And that is all there is to it. So...